This video is brought to you by Big Idea Design. They make titanium pocket tools and pins, like the Bit Bar, which is a screwdriver with a pocket clip and bit storage in the handle, and the TPT and the TPT slide, which hold a standard utility knife blade. They also recently launched a titanium EDC wrench and offer pins like the TI Click, TI Arto EDC, and the TI Pocket Pro. To learn more about Big Idea Design, click the links in the description, and you can also use the coupon code BESTDAMNEDC for $5 off any purchase over $50. And if you do, it'll help support the show. Welcome back, everybody. My name is Taylor Martin. This is the Best Damn EDC, and it's time for another EDC Weekly. And if you're new here, since this is a community show, I start off with community announcements. The first of which is on Wednesday, I uploaded a video featuring some really cool tools from Coke Tools over on Instagram. He's got the Duo X, this is a prototype, the POS tool, and also the KTC2, which is his first production folder, which is available for pre-order right now. Go check out that video. Second, there is an Olight flash sale going on today only. And I think by the time you see this, the flash sale on the H2R Nova, which is their headlamp and right angle flashlight. This flashlight is 30% off, but that's only from 12 p.m. to 2 p.m. Eastern Daylight Time. So I think this one is probably already over by the time you're seeing this. Also available today only is the deal they have going on on the Warrior X. This is the limited edition desert tan version of the flashlight. Today only it's 30% off, but if you bundle it with the remote switch, which turns it on remotely and the rifle mount or the rail mount for your rifle, you can get 40% off the bundle. And when you spend over $169, which seems like a whole lot, but this bundle is 160 bucks. So if you spend over $169, you actually get their new M1T Raider Plus, which is very similar to the M1T Raider I did a video on last year. The Plus version is free with a purchase over $169. So if you're still interested in these and you're watching this on March 22nd, Eastern Daylight Time, hit the links down below. It's all linked if you're interested in any of that. Next up, last week I said I was giving away a Best Damn EDC version of the Giltech Ruck. I said guess a number between 999 and 2000. A lot of you didn't watch the video because a lot of you guessed numbers between zero and 1000 which is what I normally do, but I mixed it up just to catch you guys. But for those of you who did guess between 999 and 2000, I randomly selected a number using Google and the random number selected was 1,213. People guessed 1,214, people guessed 1,212. A lot of people guessed 1,212, but the first was Dago1209. You are the proud owner of a Giltech Ruck with the best MEDC logo on it. I will be in touch. In fact, I've already been in touch. You've already emailed me back, so good on you. And for those of you who have won stuff in the past and you've not heard from me, I'm trying to get in touch with all of you. There are several of you that I have talked to but not exchanged any information for me to get this stuff to you. And uh, yeah, just email me. Email me if you have won something and I will take care of it. But I've tried to reach, I believe it's Unsilent Zone and Lupe Vera. Lupe Vera won the Copper Olight and Unsilent Zone won a Best MEDC shirt like this right here. I haven't heard from either of you. I've tried to get in touch with you. So just email me, pretty please. With that said, I'm doing another giveaway this week. It's gonna be a Key Smart. If you wanna know how to win a Key Smart, watch till the end of the video because somewhere throughout, I will tell you how to win. And as you now know, I mix things up. So it's not always the same. Try harder. Watch the video. If you do remember, last week I said that this episode was going to be a budget-friendly episode. So if you submitted and it was a budget-friendly EDC, you had a chance, a higher chance than normal, of getting featured in this week's show. So all of the ones selected this week are budget-friendly. And let's do the thing. I almost forgot my whiskey. I almost forgot my whiskey. Maybe next week I won't have to wait for three hours for the people upstairs to stop hammering on stuff and doing things so I can get the show started a little earlier because uh, it's almost midnight. I got here at like 8.20. First up of this week, we have a submission from James Lee. He's actually been featured in the past and he says that this submission isn't too different from his past submission, but I beg to differ. But you can find James over on Instagram at jnockley. First up, we have a Leatherman Wave in the top left of the photo. And next to that is his wallet of choice. That is the Penguin wallet. I do remember that wallet is the same as last time, but next to that is his knife of choice, which is the Ontario Rat model number one. In the bottom part of the tray, there are an assortment of key danglers and keychain quick release magnets. And attached to those are his car keys. He has a Nissan and Honda key but he also has an Olight i3e EOS. His pin of choice is the Fisher Space Pin Bullet in matte black with a clip. 
and he also carries the Streamlight MicroStream. His phone of choice is the Apple iPhone 7 Plus, which he carries in an OtterBox commuter case with the Love Handle phone strap. And then finally, and I don't think it's pictured, maybe it's underneath the phone, is the Harry Potter Marauders map bandana. So really the only thing in this photo that's not exactly budget friendly is the Leatherman Wave, but I'm gonna bend the rules and say it could be budget friendly because if this is an original Leatherman Wave and not a Wave Plus, you could have found those things for as little as a dollar as little as a dollar after they rolled out the Wave Plus because places like Lowe's and Home Depot and everything, they have these things called penny stock. And what it is, is when things become discontinued, they will discount it and they'll discount it even further and discount it even further down until it's a penny. And when it's a penny, you can literally buy a product, a Leatherman Wave for a penny if you just time it right and you know how to play the cards. However, there are some Lowe's locations and different hardware stores that will not sell penny items, but you can find them at some locations and luck up because they'll sell them to you. And if they don't, it's a tragedy because they just toss them. They throw them away. But I found my current Leatherman Wave at Academy Sports for about 60 bucks. So not a bad deal, not the best steal ever, but I'm gonna let it slide for this one. James says, hey man, how's it going? Not much has changed with my EDC since my photo got featured a couple of months ago. The one change was the Magnus, which I feel like has really upgraded my EDC and made it work well. Totally agreed, my keys are right here. Somebody asked me actually in the Discord just a little bit ago if I trust these magnets, and yes, he's not using the same ones I am. I think he got these on Amazon, he explains, but these are from Urban Carvers over on Etsy. These things are awesome. They have, I believe it's a 15 pound magnet on either side and they take some serious force to pull them apart. You can hear how hard they snap together. And the best way to pull them apart is to try to like angle them or something. Otherwise it's pretty tough. And I've been carrying a version of Dustin's uh, magnetic quick releases. And I guess for about five months, three, four, I don't know how long he sent these to me forever ago. And, uh, I've never had a single issue with my keys coming off. I've had other things come off my keys and not the actual keys themselves. So uh, do I trust it? Yes. Did it change the EDC game for me? Absolutely. Do I recommend them? Highly, highly recommend magnetic quick releases. They're awesome. Anyway, he says, the magnets I got were on Amazon and branded as net releases for fly fishing. I switch a lot between driving my car and my wife's car, so the magnets make it really easy for me to switch my house key between my car keys without messing with key rings. They also help when I forget something in the house. I can leave the car running for my wife while I run in. This has been my EDC for a month now, and I don't see changing it for a while other than the occasional knife swap. That's all for now. Thanks for all you do, Taylor. Take care, carry proud. Hey, that's a really good call out. That, or like a sign off, carry proud. Should I change it from carry on to carry proud? I mean, I like carry on, you guys like it, but it's never like resonated with me too well. Like I always associated carry on with like the chive or something, you know, keep calm and carry on and all that. Um, so I don't know, carry proud is pretty cool. As you can see here, this is a mostly budget setup and it's, it's a blackout theme. This is a sick carry. Thanks for sharing James again. And you now have a second entry into the March giveaway. Next up, we have a submission from Ben L. I actually shared this over on Instagram earlier in the week. And this one's great because it's minimalist, it's blackout as well, and it's budget friendly. So first up we have in the top right of the photo, the Orbit Key 2.0 in black leather. It also has the brown leather inside because they don't do the total blackout anymore for some reason. Beneath that is the Quark Tools Carbon Utility Knife. His wallet of choice is the A-Slim Tuski Leather Business Card Holder. He also has a German silver coin from 1873. And he also has underneath everything, the buff in high UV black. And finally not pictured is his phone of choice, which is the Xiaomi Mi A2. Ben says, hey Taylor, this picture was shot on my Xiaomi Mi A2. I have to admit that the Orbit Key isn't budget friendly, but I had some annoying experiences using cheaper leather organizers previously. The silver coin has no sentimental value to me. I use it as a shopping cart chip. Normally these things disappear quite often, but I won't lose this piece of history. Can't wait for upcoming best damn EDC formats. Greetings from Germany, Ben. So I think this is really neat and I disagree with you on the Orbit Key. I don't think that a 30 to $40 key organizer is not budget friendly. I mean, obviously there are cheaper ones on Amazon. You can get them for like five, six, seven bucks if you really want to. I think it's like 35 or 40 bucks for the leather version. And you're not going off the charts. You're not getting like a hundred dollar key bar in titanium. You're getting something that's functional, something that looks neat and works better than the competition. The Orbit key absolutely works better than a lot of the budget key organizers. It's got 
a really, really neat locking system. When you turn that Chicago screw, it has points where it will lock into place and it will not loosen beyond that point unless you really put some force onto it. You're getting quality gear, but also not like throwing money away or getting, you know, a $500 pin. By that standard, a Fisher Space Pin Bullet wouldn't be budget friendly, right? Because you can get a $5 pin or a $1 or 10 cent pin for that matter, but you can also spend just a hair more and get something that's quality. And I don't think that's breaking the rules of budget friendly, you know? I think that's, that's a totally fair way to go about it. And I don't think spending 35, 40 bucks on something that you use and is significantly better than the competition. I don't think that's splurging. I think that's buying smart, something that will last you for years. Anyway, thank you for sharing. I obviously like this photo because I shared it on Instagram and have featured it here. And thank you again, Ben. You now have a second entry into the March giveaway. And now it's time to learn how you can win the Keysmart. I don't have it with me because I don't think ahead and it's still at home. But if you want to win a Keysmart, tell me in the comments down below why you do or do not carry a key organizer for your keys. Do you just let them jingle? Do you carry one? If so, why? And if not, tell me why. I will just pick a comment at random and then we'll have our winner. We'll get a Keysmart in the mail. It will be actually a Mossy Oak version of the key smart, just the standard key smart with a mossy oak finish. The next submission comes from Xander Leon. You can actually find him over on Instagram at zn.leon. And first up we have the selected hanky handkerchief in the top left of the photo. Sitting on top of that is the Casio F-91W watch, which is the one I featured in my Amazon video. He has a random department store leather wallet to the right of that. And beside that is his pin of choice, which is just a big soft feel pin. His knife of choice beside that is the Ontario Rat 2, and he also has a Gearlight Mini S50 flashlight. He has a multi-tool here as well, that is the Gerber Dime, and then the bottom of the photo is his key situation. He has a Nighthize Espiner Slide Lock Carabiner number three, as well as a PP Fish portable daily pill case. And then finally, not pictured in the photo, is the Apple iPhone SE, which I imagine he used to take the photo. And Xander says, I'm a college student, so all of my gear is very budget friendly. I carry a handkerchief because I'm a pretty messy person and I tend to sweat fairly easily. Uh, I know your pain, man. It's a horrible thing and I live in the South in a humid, humid North Carolina. I'm not looking forward to the weather in North Carolina for the next six months because it's gonna be absolutely miserable. My Casio is the only watch I wear because I have small wrists, so this model fits perfectly. I've had it for five years now and it's still holding up strong. My wallet is a no-name random one I got on sale and the bifold style is what's working for me now. I need to upgrade my pin, but I'm scared of spending more than $10 on something I know I'll use. So until I feel responsible enough to upgrade, I'm sticking with this cheap Bic one. I have a couple of EDC knives that I rotate in and out, but for now I'm rocking the Rat 2. It's a workhorse and it feels great in the hand and in the pocket. I found the Gearlight brand when I was browsing on Amazon for flashlights and I had never heard of it before, but it had good reviews and it was half the price of the Olight, so I decided to give it a shot. It works well for walking my dogs at night and when I get up for a midnight snack and don't want to blind myself by turning on all the kitchen lights. I use my dime mostly when I'm around people who are not into knives because it's not intimidating at all and the clam package opener is awesome. I carry my keys on the Espiner along with a pill case because I like having immediate access to meds when I get a headache. Not gonna lie, I'm fairly new to the EDC world, so my gear is still pretty new, but carrying this stuff has completely changed my life, and I do not know how I went without it for so long. And that's very true for a lot of people. I was actually just watching um, a Smoky Mountain Knife Works podcast where there's a female on the show, I think they call her... Smugs? Snugs? I don't know. Anyway, she's on there. She did not previously carry a knife. They gave her a knife, said carry one for a week, and she fell in love with it and was like, wow. She said on the first day she was trying to find uses for the knife, and by like the second or third day, she didn't know how she went without one before, and that's true. A lot of people were like, why do you need a knife every day? I get that question all the time, especially on YouTube, not in person, because I think carrying a pocket knife in North Carolina is just kind of common. Everybody does it. But on YouTube especially, people have always asked me, why do I have a knife all the time? To cut things, that's just that. And I feel better with one. It's not for self-defense. It's literally 100% for utility. Yeah, I, I love to hear that. I'm glad you're new to the EDC community. Welcome to the EDC community. Thank you for sharing. This is a really neat setup. You now have a second entry into the March giveaway. Next up, we have a submission from Brent F. You can find him over on the website at Texas Law. And this carry, I know some of you are gonna say it's not budget friendly because he has a firearm, which firearms get very expensive very quickly. But I think for the most part, all the gear here is pretty budget friendly. I mean, most of the other things 
are very budget friendly. So first up, we have the Springfield XDS nine millimeter handgun, and he carries that in a concealment express in waistband holder. He has an extra nine round magazine and a Phobos mag holder. And then finally a 511 double duty TDU belt. On top of that is his watch of choice. That is the Timex Expedition field watch. He also has the Gerber EAB utility knife. Below that is the Leatherman side clip multi-tool, and he also carries the Perfect Fit Credential Wallet. In the bottom left of the photo is his phone of choice. That is a cheap ZTE smartphone. He doesn't list which model. He literally just says cheap ZTE smartphone, but most ZTE smartphones are cheap. And he also carries a generic black handkerchief. On top of that is a night ties key ring and a P38 can opener. To the right of that is his flashlight. That's the Coast HX5 AAA flashlight. And in the middle of the photo is Carmex lip balm. And there you go. I think for the most part, this is a very budget friendly, like all of the non firearm stuff is all pretty budget friendly stuff. You've got a pretty old school Leatherman here. You have the Gerber EAB, which is it's like five or six bucks on Amazon. I think $10 at Walmart and Lowe's. By the way, when I made the utility knife video, Walmart was not carrying it. They are now, just a heads up. And you also have this Timex watch. It's not the cheapest. I think this one in particular is like 30, 40 bucks. But 30, 40 bucks is budget as far as watches go. The watch on my wrist, I paid 250 for this. It retails for like $500. So yeah, a $50 watch is a pretty budget friendly watch. There are cheaper ones but this is also not the cheapest EDC ever. It's it's budget friendly. And I did make this picture pretty moody. It, it was not very moody to begin with, um, but I fixed that. So you're welcome. <laughs> anyway, thank you for sharing Brent. You don't have a second entry into the March giveaway. The fifth and final submission this week is also another minimalist carry. And it's from somebody who's been featured on the show before, but it was several, several months ago. And I also shared this picture over on Instagram earlier this week. This one comes from Dan Chappelle. You can find him over on Instagram at minimaldad87. And first up in the far left of the photo is the Griffin Pocket Tool. That's the original Pocket Tool. Just a quick plug, there are gonna be Best Damn EDC logo versions of the Griffin Pocket Tool once Carry Commission finally launches. An update on Carry Commission, life happened. I'm still working on it, but uh, it's behind schedule. So just trying to prepare for the nursery and the baby coming and everything else. And I've not had time to work on it, but I will soon, I promise. Beside that is his flashlight of choice. That's the Rovivon Aurora A3. And his multi-tool of choice in this photo is the Gerber Dime. He's carrying on a KeySmart key dangler. They have a specific name for that, but I can't remember it. And he didn't list it. Next to that is his wallet. That is the Nomadic wallet. And in the top of the photo is the Zebra F-701 pin in all metal. And to the right of the photo is his knife of choice. That is the Spyderco Tenacious. Dan says, I'm a minimalist, so I like my EDC to be slim and functional. My Spyderco gets the most use at home in the evening to opening new toys for my daughter to my daily meal prep. The Gerber Dime is incredibly useful on a daily basis at work and at home. I sharpen the blade so if I need to cut something at work, I can use that instead so I don't freak out any snowflakes who might worry. The Griffin Pocket Tool is useful for various repairs, but also as a fidget toy. The pin flashlight are pretty standard, but have not let me down yet. I also have my iPhone 7 used to take the picture in an Apple smart case to keep me trucking all day long. And yeah, I agree when it comes to pry tools, there's not much fidgeting to be done with some of these, but I fidget with them. Like with this one, as you could tell in the beginning of the video that I did on Wednesday, the, the feature of Coke tools, I spin this one in my hand. Um, so I do fidget with this one quite a bit, but this one, I would just sit and take the bit out, put the bit back in, take the bit out, put the bit back in. So yeah, I fidget with these pry tools all the time. Even the Griffin pocket tool, the XL that I carry, I fidget with it. There's not much to be done with it, but I just kind of fiddle with it in my hand. I don't do anything. It's completely static, but just having it in my hand and tinkering with it, I, I just can't stop myself from doing it, but I do spin this one tirelessly while I'm at my desk. Anyway, I think this is, God, probably some of the best gear you can get for the money. Honestly, your Griffin Pocket Tool is a pretty budget-friendly pry tool made out of stainless steel, and it is rock solid. The Rovivon Aurora, obviously there are cheaper options for flashlights, but nothing quite as compact and bright. I still carry one, and I still love it. The only thing that I would do differently in this picture on a budget maybe of like around $100. I think that's probably around the price point for this whole EDC. I'd probably go with a different knife. I would probably get a D2 version of the Rat 2 or the Rat 1, um, just because the blade steel, the Tenacious is in dire need of an upgrade. And the only way they need to upgrade it really is to make it D2 or VG10 or something to that degree. Getting past the 8CR13 MOV would be 
phenomenal for Tenacious. I think to keep this thing competitive with things like the Ontario Rat, they need a D2 version at the same price point, at the same price point and drop the HCR13, drop it totally or drop the price of it, you know? Because I think it's fine. It's about like the, the OS8 version of the Rat, but I don't know, that's my opinion. I could ramble on this for a very long time. But this is an awesome carry. Thank you for sharing, Dan. And you now have a second entry into the March giveaway. That's going to do it for this video. If you found it helpful and you enjoyed it, be sure to hit that thumbs up button down below and subscribe to see more stuff like this in the future. I do this show, the EDC Weekly, every single Friday. And throughout the week, I do different types of features on EDC gear. And I do budget videos like I did recently with the Amazon budget, where I put together a budget EDC on Amazon using a $50 budget. So... If you think that stuff's cool, hit that subscribe button. And if you wanna be notified when I upload new videos, be sure to hit that notification bell beside the subscribe button. And if you wanna support what I'm doing here, hit the links down below. I link everything in every video and many of those links are affiliate links. So if you wanna support what I'm doing, click through, purchase things that you're gonna buy anyway. It gives us a little bit of a kickback, keeps the lights on, and it doesn't cost you anything extra. Also, you can go to patreon.com forward slash bestdamnedc if you want to support us that way. And be sure to follow us around the web. You can find us on Twitter and Instagram at bestdamnedc. You can find me, Taylor Martin, on Twitter and Instagram at Casper Tech. And until next time, carry on.